Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. This is Reverend Essie and friends with Micromana. Amen. Today is the 11th of May, 2011. It's 11 May 11. God bless you. I hope everybody's been having a blessed time in Jesus. Amen, because God is good. He's been good to me. Hallelujah. God is good, and he is worthy to be praised. When I rose up this morning, I thanked him for a new day. Amen. So we're going to get this started. We are going to study tonight. I'll say this ahead of time. We're going to study out of Luke chapter 16, and we're going to start with verse 19 until the end, 19 until uh, 19 up to verse 31. And we're going to be studying tonight about the rich man and Lazarus. Amen. Praise God. The rich man and Lazarus. Who just came on? If you want to say Nicole. your name. Hi. How are you? Hey. Okay. Hi, we I'm have good. me. Yeah, we have me, you, and Lex, and I start recording already. Did you want to read or no? Um, no, I'm doing five million things at the same time. Re- okay. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Okay. So if you want, if you feel like jumping in, just jump in. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and start with a prayer, and then sing a little song. And if anybody wants to do anything, let me know. Heavenly Father, Lord God, you are good. You are my Father. I love how you handle your business, kingdom business, Lord God. You're just so awesome. Thank you for blessing us. I'm sure I'm not the only one, Lord, but you've truly been blessing us, and it is such a wonder. You've kept us away from harm. You've kept us sometimes even away from ourselves, Lord God. I thank you for your everlasting arms that we can lean on. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for the beautiful sky that you've given us to just look upon and think of you. I thank you, Lord God, for everything that you've blessed us with. I thank you for us being able to walk and talk and hear and see and love and share. For the people, Lord God, who are going through bad uh, weather down by the Mississippi River and all those people down south, Lord God, who are losing their homes, and there's no joke, as we rise up and take showers in the morning, these people have lost their homes to snakes and sewage. And I lift those people up to you, Lord God, in Jesus' holy name. Please comfort them. And everything that they had, Lord God, has been ruined. But we know that when you give somebody something, you give them a second chance, that second chance is always better than the first. So I ask right now, Lord God, that you straighten things up for them, keep them in your arms and the children and even the animals, Lord God. We pray for each and every one of them. We love you so much. We know that you meant for us to pray for everybody. Lord God, for the sick and the shut-in, those who are incarcerated, those that are on now, those who can't make it. Lord God, those that just want to know more about you, people who are hungry for you, they're not looking for titles. They're not looking for certain uh, denominations. They just want to have a relationship with you. There are people out there that have been hurt, Lord God, by by churches and been hurt by preachers and been hurt by, by family. And, Lord God, I ask right now that you comfort those people as well. Let them know that you are with them, and all they need is you. All they need is you, Lord. I thank you for that. As we do this Bible study tonight, Lord God, I ask that you send your Holy Spirit in this Bible study and teach us what it is you would have us to know. Give us something good, spectacular, and new about your Holy Word. Your Word is life, and we want to breathe life into our bodies, Lord God. We want these dry bones to rise up in Jesus' holy name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh, my provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God has supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory. He gave his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Jehovah Jireh. My provider, his grace is sufficient for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh. My provider, his grace is sufficient for me. My God has supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory. He gave his angels charge over me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. 
Jehovah Jireh cares for me, for me, for me. Jehovah Jireh cares for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise your name, Lord God. God is good. i got to praise him. Anybody else have anything they want to sing or read or say? No. No. <laughs> okay. Nobody? Nobody. All right. We're going to be studying tonight from Luke chapter 16, Luke chapter 16, verses 19 to 31, about the rich man, <clears throat> the rich man of Lazarus. Um, Lex, you said you'll read with me, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I'll start with, nine, we'll do three and three. There was okay. a cer- okay, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Amen. First, before I get started, I want to say that when Jesus told parables. If you notice when Jesus told parables, he didn't use names. He spoke about the lady with the coin or something like that, the the the, the, the evil, the, the wicked judge or something. But this has a name in it. Lazarus's name is in it. And when you see a, I hate to use the word story, but when you see a story in the Bible that has a name in it like this, it's not a parable. This is truth. This is something that Jesus wants us to know. Um, that, that, that has actually happened to someone. And with him being God, he knows everything. He's omnipotent, uh, omniscient. He knows everything. And when he tells us something like this, it is either, is it already happened, going to happen, or something. It's, it's, it's the truth. And notice he said Lazarus, the beggar named Lazarus, but the rich man didn't have a name. And here, the beggar was always laying at the rich man's gate. When you read verse 19, it says that the rich man was clothed in royal colors. He had purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. He ate well. Everything he had was good. He had a lot of stuff, we'll say it that way. He was rich, rich apparel, luxury. I'm looking here, linen, okay. Um, He was the exact opposite of the beggar named Lazarus. And it also says in verse 20 that Lazarus laid at the rich man's gate full of sores. When I see this about Lazarus being full of sores, This man had to go through something. He wasn't normal looking. He he wasn't the norm. There was something different about him. He was going through illnesses or sicknesses. There was something for him to be full of sores. He had to have, you never know, it might have been bug bites or some kind of disease or something that he went through. Like it says about uh, Job. Uh, Job was taking rocks and scraping pus out of his sores on his body. And that's what this reminds me of. This man was really, really, he was in a bad way. And 21 says he, all, he wanted, all he wanted was to be fed. He didn't want to be taken to the hospital. He didn't want the rich man to use his medic, Medicare or Medicaid for his health. He just wanted to eat. Can I say all something? He, yeah, sure. It reminds me of... We, um, I was talking to a few people, and, you know, there are some people who are so anxious to just walk up and lay hands on you because you said you have a headache or, oh, I hurt my hand. Oh, sister, let me pray for you. And, you know, and uh, knowing how strong our faith is and knowing how our God takes care of us, I already know that my healing is here. And I know why I have the headache. I ate onion and I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I'm asking for a Pepsi or a ginger ale or something to eat. 
so people assume that because we appear to have something on us, like the source, that mm-hmm. they know what's good for us instead of relying on the anointing of God to tell them, feed this person, because it may be the food that brings the healing. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Start, how do they say, don't go ahead of the Holy Spirit? Ooh. Uh, forgive me, Lord, because I know I've done that Uh-oh. before. Uh, yeah, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not <laughs> saying to me when I've done something wrong. I know I've done it before. We try to take the place. You know what that reminds me of? Um, I- I'll say it short because we're on this phone and, and you never know who might. But y- have you ever, um, have you ever had a person, have you ever told somebody that you got blessed, God blessed you? And have you ever had a person rob God of his blessings and claim that you got it because of them? You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. Uh-huh. And I, I know somebody that does, I think God, God bless them, you know, Lord bless them. But I know somebody that does that. Every time the Lord blesses me in some kind of way, it's because of them, you know, and, and it's because of their prayer. And, you know, it could be, you know, do you know, they don't realize that the three, you know, the three of us right here talking, we have so many people praying for us. We, we're online. We have our blackberries. You know, we have I'll, so many people praying for us that you never know who it could have been from, you know? I was, yeah, I was going to say the prayer, of, the fervent, the sexual prayer of a righteous man. Righteous. Of mm-hmm. as much. Okay, so mm-hmm. while you're sitting there claiming God's glory and doing the work of the Holy Ghost and taking it upon yourself, and coming close to being blasphemous, are you really standing in righteous righteousness? See, mm-hmm. see, yeah, they got. A, you're right. You're right. Yeah. So what can, what can we say? What can we say to them? Prayer? Um, you know, let go and let God. Mm-hmm. How do you tell them though? This is the situation I'm in. It's somebody that I love very, very much. And how do I tell this person that it could have been the other? Thousands that are, you know, we don't know who God's going to use. But, you know, when a person, that, that I see that as, I, 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 I hate to admit it, but sometimes I get offended. I see that as this person's trying to rob God of his power, of his works. You know, we have to be careful with that. <laughs> you know, I'm glad you brought that up. All right. Well, Anybody? Oh, was, go ahead. I'm sorry. My no, I'm not hurrying. Go ahead. And, I'm not sure if there's a scripture that um, it says the saints, the prayer of the saints. Isn't that plural? It's not Thank one you. person. It's plural. And um, I guess the way you can approach them is, you know, I really appreciate you praying for me, and it's possible that God is using you. God is going to continue to use you, but I also thank God for the other saints that he is using to pray for me that is allowing some of these blessings to come through. And then... You know what? Well, While I'm talking it about it, you know, these blessings, maybe God just wants to bless me because he said it is his will. Mm-hmm. See? It could be just because he wants to, because he loves me. Right. Amen. I think, we all have, I think we all have our own individual relationship with God, and you could mm-hmm. have, like, 500 people pay, like praying for you, but you don't know what God has for you. Like, so... Mm-hmm. It's a it's it's about your heart. Like you can have all the prayers in the world, but you don't know what God has best for you. Mhm. What that song say? What God has? What God is? How's it go? What God gave to me is for me. Does anybody know that song? What God has for me, it is for me. It's for me. Yeah. See, it, it, God, you just didn't get blessed just because somebody. You know, it could, it could be just from Him. For such a time as that, right? Amen. Right. <laughs> Amen. These All right, next we're here before I was formed. Oh, okay. Right. I'll, I'll be quiet now. <laughs> that's, no, no, that's all right. I, I like this. I like Amen. My brother, did, did Eric come on yet? Yep, I'm here. Hi, Hi. how are you? Doing well. Just enjoying listening to you guys. Amen. Praise God. You're no, not washing any dogs tonight, right? <laughs> no, but I, I had to walk him. <laughs> Oh. That's <laughs> okay. Well, but I did nineteen, twenty, and twenty-one. Lex is going to do twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four, and then you can pick up um, twenty-five, twenty-six, and twenty-seven. 
Okay, that's Luke, which chapter again? 16? Luke, Luke 16, uh-huh. Okay. And right. everybody take your time. We're not in a hurry. Don't feel nervous. I love this. Now, you see what happened? Y'all, did you see? You just heard. Did everybody listen what happened on the last Bible study we had where God stepped in and told something that nobody knew but him? Amen. Yes. Mm-hmm. You got confirmation. All right. So, mm-hmm. Miss Lex 22, 23, and 24. And listen, when you guys read, if you're not sure or you're a little nervous or you're not sure what to say, Take your time, and if nothing comes to you, just ask for help, and we'll be glad to jump in. Amen. Good, babe. The time came when the beggar died, and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away, with Lazarus, Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me, and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, because I am in agony in this fire. Mm-hmm. Mm. <laughs> uh, I mean, they, I think it's saying that, um, it's, I don't know, I think it's all about love, and you don't have no love, like, to show anybody, and you're just, I don't know, in the, mm. in the world then we're going to hell. And the people that struggle, like, just like I said, I was saying earlier today, the people that actually stand and try to walk that line, we're going to be living good, and we're going to look at them one day, and they're going to be thirsty, and it's going to be too late. That's it. That's it? And, and yeah, it's too late. <laughs> you know, my Bible, we where to say that? Down here, 1501, too late, in the Thompson Chain reference. <laughs> <Isn't that laughs> it, right? And she's right. We better do God's will and do what God said to do now because on the other side, on the other side of the grave, as you can see, it's too late. Yeah. Wow. Notice, notice his attitude. Can I just notice, say something that I notice here? You know, uh-huh. the, rich man, the rich man didn't have any pity on Lazarus before when he, they both was on the earth. And... um they, uh, you know, he just really had, didn't have any pity on him. He just looked at Lazarus as somebody who was supposed to serve him because he's rich. And uh, even after he died, he carried on the same uh, attitude. Like, he just told Abraham to send Lazarus. Wow. To dip him. He gave specific instructions on how he wanted to be relieved by Lazarus. Still. Wow. <laughs> I never noticed that. He sure did. Verse 24. Yeah. Oh, oh, my. I mean, he still had a smug attitude about it. Like, you know, who cares how he, he you get re- relief? You're in hell, man. But he got this smug attitude like, get Lazarus and have him dip his finger and come and touch my tongue. That's the way I wanted to have it done. And, and Abraham was like, uh, uh, dude, I mean, actually, all of the blessings from God, have, you know, they can have a tie to your attitude. You know what I'm saying? So this dude is just like, he's just like, pull up from the inside. That's the one thing I know. I noticed in those verses. Corrupt. Yeah, man. Black heart. Black heart. Mm-hmm. And you know what? He said that for him to say, send Lazarus, first of all, that is not, he has, that's the opposite of Jesus. That's the opposite of compassion. That's mm-hmm. why he went to hell because he was like his father, the devil. Jesus has compassion. Now, didn't it say earlier Lazarus was sitting there full of sores in verse 21? He was full of sores and so bad that the dogs were licking him. Now, Mm -hmm. if Lazarus had that many sores, if he was that ill, why would you ask for God to send him, for Abraham to send him in that condition? And another thing, too, hell has to be really, think about it, hell has to be really, 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 really capital R with a capital Y at the end, exclamation point, bad. Because mm-hmm. this man is asking someone full of sores to dip his sore finger, his busted, mm-hmm. crusty, nasty, green, and yellow finger, okay, with bumps all over. Instead, he had sores, right? Mm-hmm. Would, you, would you ask somebody with a finger, like with, with a body like that, to dip their t- He said, just the tip. He said, just the tip mm-hmm. of your finger. Just give me a little bit of water. He must have been thirsty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now Lazarus wasn't, he wasn't good enough to feed. All Lazarus wanted mm-hmm. was food. He wasn't good enough to feed, but he wanted him to give him some water. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. Yep. 
<laughs> Ain't that a trip? Uh, 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 uh. Mm. Now, if you look at it too, in verse twenty-two, it says the angels carried Abraham, a, a carried um, in the cave of Paz, and they died and carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, and the rich man also died. So there was, let's just say, there was angels present. The angels, mm-hmm. angels took them to their perspective lands. So you know, there's angels present. You know, there's Abraham afar off, and then you see uh, Lazarus, and you know, you know. It would probably make sense to say, "Hey, angel, can you just like give me some water?" Mm. <laughs> you know why he couldn't do that because he was just buried. The ver- the mm. end of verse twenty two, the, the rich man also died and was buried. It didn't say anything about angels for the rich man. <laughs> <laughs> so he see he didn't have any servants. He would try to act like see he knew the angels wasn't going to serve him down there, so he asked mm-hmm. Lazarus to do it. And isn't that how they treat us nowadays as, as Christians, guys? Mm-hmm. Come on, be honest. Isn't that how they treat us? Mm-hmm. You know what that also reminds me of? Mm-hmm. Um, because he's already in hell. In Revelation 21, it says, I can't quote it word for word, and I don't have my Bible with me, but those who were sinning will still be sinning. Those Uh-oh. who were saved will still be saved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jesus is still coming back. Mm-hmm. That reminds me of that. I like that. I just seen that a couple months ago. A couple weeks ago I was reading that. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. right. I think somebody mm-hmm. was doing a Bible study online about it. I remember somebody. I, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So in other words, what, wow. whatever you're doing in this in this world right now, yeah, she's right. Yeah, she's right. Mm-hmm. Whatever you're doing in this world right now, that's what you're going to be doing. And when you mm-hmm. go to heaven or hell. Mm-hmm. Or you you at least carry that same mindset. The same mindset, and 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 we remember. We take our memory with us, so you're oh. going to remember everything you did. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's why the Bible mm-hmm. word says to renew your mind while you're here. That's why the, the Bible says to operate in faith while you're here, because everything operates in faith in heaven. You know. Uh, so renew your mind down here, because all this earthly stuff ain't going to make a hill of beans when you get up there. Mhm. All right, I got a question for everybody. How, uh, just do, 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 do questioning. Nobody's right. Nobody's wrong. Only God's right. Right? How mm-hmm. do you feel about bedside repentance? I'll go last. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, when a person has been nasty all their lives, let's say somebody's mm-hmm. been nasty all their lives and treated somebody bad all their life. And, mm-hmm. and all of a sudden, the doctor tells them they have cancer and they have three weeks to live. They mm-hmm. wait until the, the the next to the last day to mm-hmm. ask God to forgive them. Is it fair? Mm-hmm. You know what? Well, they make it fair. I'm sorry. I'm I, sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. I was going to say, I really think Aaron should go first since he wants to go last. <laughs> but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it, it, I, if Christ can give the thief on the cross a chance at the last minute, He's going mm-hmm. to give everybody that chance. But I, I personally, I think it's a little inconsiderate because you've had a chance. But there are those that really didn't have a chance or didn't know until the last second. But if you did know, you've had your chance. This That's is right. my personal feeling. It's like I, I feel like this. If I'm baking a cake and I keep asking you to come help me with my cake and then you wait until the last second to come pull it out the oven, you had a chance. You knew when I was pouring the flour and the eggs in. So why are you going to wait to the last minute just so you can get some because you helped pull it out the oven? But then again, um, there's different levels. Um, there's the crown. You got to help me out here, Reverend Essie. There, there, you know what I mean? Just because you're bedside, you're at the last minute, you're not going to have the same reward as someone who's been serving God since they were 10 years old. No, wait, I'll tell you what went through my mind on that one. Okay, remember in the Bible where um, the people, the workers got upset because the people who came in the last few minutes of work got paid the same amount of money, but Jesus said all of them agreed to work for the, you, you, you know what I'm talking about? I can't, mm-hmm. I, I can't bring up what scripture it is, but the person, let's say, Okay, let's say Nicole start working at 8.30 in the morning. She start working for the master at 8.30 in the morning. She's, and she agreed that she would work for $10 an hour. Mm-hmm. And let's say Aaron comes and he, let's say Aaron comes at 12.30 and he decides that he'll work for $10 an hour. Mm-hmm. I come along and the place closes at 5. 
I come along at 450, okay, the last 10 minutes, and I and you need more help you just to get your work done for that last 10 minutes. And I and, and the boss hires me for $10 an hour for 10 minutes. I get the same amount Yun's got. I mean, did you see what I'm saying? I'm, 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 I have the hours and stuff wrong. You see what I'm saying? We still get the same yeah. amount of pay, but you see, but we didn't do the same amount of work. Right, right, right. Okay, is, it, is that fair? But Steve, see, Jesus said we still get the same amount of pay because mm-hmm. that's what we agreed to work for. Mm-hmm. Yep. I never was good on math, but you just understand what I mean, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, I told you. And I was going to mention that there. I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead, ma'am. I was just saying, you still receive your salvation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's what it's all I mean, about, right? Yeah, and Jesus gave that. I was going to mention that parable that says that, you know, um, you know, the workers were uh, upset at their wages, and it didn't. And so, the, the 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 what I get from that parable, it doesn't matter when you come into the kingdom, mm-hmm. that you come into the kingdom, because see, God's heart is like this. Um, uh, I died for everybody to have a chance at salvation. Like the Bible said, He would that nobody should perish. That includes the person at the last minute. And it ties right into um, uh, what my sister said, that you may not oh, have the right. same reward. Yeah, it may, you may not have the same reward that another person will have. You know, that I, I believe, this is my opinion, I believe that there are bedside salvation uh, people who are so happy to be servers in heaven. Mm-hmm. They're just so happy to be servers in heaven. They're like, oh, I'm here, though. Oh man, <laughs> the word though. <laughs> yeah, I'm mm-hmm. here because I could have been there, and I can see there. And this is exactly what these people were saying my whole life. And I made a decision before I checked out because actually your body, you know, gives you the permission to be on Earth. You know, and uh, it's just like a space suit. You can't go out in space unless you had a correct apparatus. You can't be on Earth without the uh, correct apparatus. And his body gives you certain rights. He gives you the right to be here. Like the, the Jesus said, uh, whoever comes through, doesn't come through the door as a thief and a robber. See, the, the devil was not born. He doesn't have a body. So he, hadn't, he, he, hasn't, he doesn't have a right to rule up here. He just doesn't have a right. Yeah, you know, to do it. He does it because people who do have the right obey him. So just imagine everybody who has, the right, who has a body who has the right to be here, decided to obey God. He would go out of business that minute. But because he has manipulated a lot of people who have the right to be here, he's kind of trying to control. But he doesn't. He, he doesn't. God's going to take everything that he owns back. Uh-huh. I, think, I think I got a little off there, but that's what, that's what I feel like. And just to back up to my point, I just think there's a whole – I can't prove it with Scripture, but I bet you if there's some people serving in heaven – they just happy to be there. Uh-huh. I don't mind cleaning toilets as long as I'm in heaven. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I, I just right. don't mind. Right. All right. Okay. Um, who's doing? You did yours, right? Did you do 22, 23, and 24, right? Oh, that was you, Lex, right? Yeah. Hello? Did, she, she yeah. Right. Sorry, I had a Okay. Okay, Eric could do 25, 26, and 27. Okay. Of Luke 16. Uh, okay. But Abraham said, Son, wow, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus received uh, Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted, mm-hmm. and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fix. There it is. So, so that they they which could pass, would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us. That would come. That would come from thence. In twenty-seven, then he said, "I pray thee, therefore, Father." That thou would send 
him to my father. <laughs> wow. <laughs> now, we just talked mm. about this boy having a smug attitude. Because to him, Lazarus is still beneath him. I, he's in hell. Uh, Lazarus is being comforted. But he looks at Lazarus as, you still beneath me. Okay, so mm. since you won't let him drop water on my tongue, send him to my people. <laughs> put him to work. Yeah, put him to work. <laughs> I don't want to make feed him. him, just make him work. Right. <laughs> I can't, I, if I can't use him, at least let my people use him. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and that's something. <laughs> Ain't that a trip? I'm amazed at this man's attitude. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. wow. I mean, he, he really has to be shown that any any relief, any signs of uh, satisfaction is cut off. Mm-hmm. You know, because he has to be literally shown this because all the time he's been on earth is has been smug attitude. I don't share. I don't give. I don't do anything. It's all about me. Mm-hmm. And see, Abraham told him that now he's comforted and you are tormented. Now, tormented, to me, uh, in my um, uh, opinion, means more than just he's in hell burning. That means you cannot even let your people know. You can't have somebody uh, wet your tongue. You just got to mm-hmm. sit there and burn up and, take it. and think about everything you did to get there. That's what you gonna. That's what you got to deal with. Step on people, use people, abuse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a, there's a guy. Well, I don't know him, but he, I heard him say that uh, a lot of people in jail or have long term sentences they go crazy because, especially if they really did something wrong. Um, because if they're there and they did something really wrong or malicious to somebody, and their conscience has all that time to condemn them about what they did. Because, you know, you can't run from your conscience. And they sit there and just go crazy because it's like, oh, I really wish I hadn't done it. Oh, my God, look what it landed me. Mm-hmm. And that is more, that is torture mentally. You know, so they wind up, you know, they just kind of, and that kind of sheds some light on here because this dude, in his smug attitude, is really fighting this conscious thing himself. And the last thing I'll say about these three verses is um, the golf fix. Now, you know, I, we don't really know what that looks like, you know, but it's a great distance. It said it's a great golf. And see, when the Bible says great, it means great. You know, when, Bible, when the Bible calls you old, you old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when it says great, it's huge. But notice uh, that these guys can communicate like they're sitting right next to each other. Okay. Yeah. Spirit there's no dis- right. There's no distance in the spirit realm, even though they, even though it is. Now I can't, I can't explain that. You know what I'm saying? Because I've never been there. But these guys are. Can- and I don't think they're yelling. <laughs> you know, I don't. Maybe last, maybe the rich man is yelling. But I don't. It don't say. It don't say that they they yell. They they're screaming across a golf. You know what I'm saying. And the, my whole point is, even when the devil tries to say things and to make you do things now, while you have your earth suit on, you can talk to him exactly at that point, and he hears you. He has gotta obey the word of God because right. you don't have to find him. As soon as something happened, you can rebuke him right then in the name of Jesus. He heard that. He heard that. And to him, and see, this is what's not really, this is really talked about. Uh, it's like stabbing him. Just like, remember when he was, uh, he was tempting Jesus? Jesus was all hungry. And I tell you, I, I'm just like this. When I am hungry, I don't want to be, <laughs> leave me alone. <laughs> so I understand uh-huh. Jesus, but Jesus responded with the word of God, and it was just like he was jabbing the devil in the heart. And then he would hold hold his heart, come back and try it again, and Jesus just jabbed him again with the word of God. And then he, and that's why it says he fleed from him for a season because he had to recover from that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's all I wanted to say about that uh, that golf. It's, it's amazing how there's distance, but it's not. Anyway, mm-hmm. maybe it's just me. 
And you know what, too, also, our, our glorified bodies, once we get to heaven, our glorified bodies are going to be able to do things that we couldn't do down here. Yeah. And the speed of light is like, what, 186.00 or whatever it is, and, mm-hmm. and that's down here. Imagine mm-hmm. how fast you're going to be able to go up in heaven. You're going to be able to go like 100 times faster than we go down here on earth. And I believe that the reason he kept saying, send Lazarus, send Lazarus, is because he knew Lazarus could move. Lazarus was up, mm-hmm. he's going left, right, up, down. When we get to heaven, if Jesus walked through a, a, a locked door. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay, and we're going to be able to go through things. We're going to be able to go through stone. We're going to be able to blink our eyes and be there. And I think this man, in, when you're in hell, you're not allowed to travel. He clips your mm-hmm. wings. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He clips your wings. Mm-hmm. I don't want to cut you off. You go ahead. No, that's okay. When I say mm-hmm, I mean, yeah, I'm done. <laughs> okay. I, it reminds me also of Psalm 37 because the rich man, Although he was whatever on earth, he was still an evil doer because he did not believe in Christ. There wasn't that faith, there wasn't that trust, there wasn't that belief, which is why he's in hell. And in Psalm 37 it says, Fret not thyself because of evil doers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Now, these, I'm going to put this in my own words, and I'm taking it from Reverend Nessie's prayer, because God handles his business. The evil ones will be where God puts them, and the ones who are not evil are going to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. As we can see, that's good. Yes, definitely. That is good, yep. So, in other words, God's saying, don't worry about them. Listen, we don't have time to focus on what they See, this is what I admit. Since you guys are on here, I, I want this to be like a deliverance class. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I always had a problem with people doing evil. And if you watch my videos and stuff on YouTube, you'll see that I really get upset about some things to the point where I have to remind myself to change the conversation. Okay, I get mm-hmm. fixated on it. Okay, and I get mm-hmm. upset and I get angry about watching these evil doers. But see, the, 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 the thing where I'm going wrong with that is, you got to leave it up to God. You, it, just mm-hmm. because you're speaking about it and just because you're talking about it doesn't mean it's going to change. We have to wait mm-hmm. for him to change it. So let go and let God. Right. They they will see their day. The evil man will see his day. It will come. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and even if they still, once they get caught, for lack of a better way to say it, once they get caught in their evil and their punishment comes, and they still trying to use you, God puts a gulf between you and him so that you're protected. Even if you did have a moment of, well, Lord, you said to help us, mm-hmm. God yeah. puts that gulf yeah. there mm-hmm. so that you're not able to because he said, I'm not going to be used, I'm not going to let mine be used. Yeah. That's right. That's right. We won't be able to. I, yeah. everybody, I hope everybody on here is listening to this. This. We won't be able to. And and another thing we have to realize is the enemy is the real enemy. It's not us. We're not the enemy. Mm -hmm. Just just because we get upset with one another every now and then, just like family does, we are not the enemy. It's not us. It's Satan and his minions. They are the Mm -hmm. enemy. So therefore, to wish bad luck on somebody or to, to... to pray for somebody's hair and nails to drop out or something like that. I mean, that's witchcraft, and we all know what the Bible says about witchcraft. It's an abomination unto God. Yeah. So remember, we we are not the enemy. Satan mm-hmm. is. Uh, yeah. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the mm-hmm. kingdom and the power and the glory for every man. Deliver us from evil. Yeah. Amen. God is not mocked. Right. And I look, look at <laughs> verse 25. Remember I said you take your memory with you? Verse 25, it says, and Abraham said, son, remember. Mm-hmm. Remember. Yeah. I mean, you take your memory. Yeah. Everything yeah. we did, guys, we're, you're going to remember it in heaven. So what, what did you say mm-hmm. about jail, prison term, life term? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why Jesus, uh, Jesus died so we wouldn't go crazy when we finally get to heaven. Yeah. Because, because it ain't that good. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. Praise the uh-huh. Lord. That's, that's, oh, uh, that's, that. okay, go ahead. <laughs> Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Okay, were, were you done? Twenty five, twenty six. Were you done? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and twenty eight, twenty nine. I guess I'll do four then. I'll do twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, and thirty one. Um, unless somebody wants to do the thirty one. <laughs> it says, "For I have five brethren," and this is still the rich man speaking. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this 
I'm sorry, but I circled it. I can't see the word. Is that made or mace? M-A. Uh, what, I, I'm sorry. It's may. It's that they may testify. Uh, verse 28. The, the yeah. last, last three words, made of torment. Play, oh, place, place, place. Place of torment. Yeah. Place of torment. Okay, because I, I write in my circle. Sorry about that. Um, mm-hmm. Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he mm-hmm. said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one <laughs> went unto them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. All right, so, mm-hmm. like Brother Aaron said, all of a sudden, now he try, or I think Nicole said, all of a sudden, now he trying to get his family saved. See, he, mm-hmm. he's saying, <laughs> this is really bad. Please just send, La- like you said about his attitude. He had a horrible attitude about Lazarus, which mm-hmm. we also have people who have horrible attitudes about us, and we don't deserve that. But there's mm-hmm. nothing that you can do about it. When it this goes to show that when somebody feels this way about you, you can't sway them. You can't change them. Just give it to God. Because he is still, after death, he's still treating Lazarus bad. Yeah. He's still, he's still using him. Mm-hmm. And then... He 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 wants he wants it, now all of a sudden you notice he's calling him Father Abraham now just like <laughs> Nikki said before yeah he he didn't have an ounce of faith or nothing before if he did he would have gave uh, Lazarus at least a sandwich mm-hmm. you know he didn't give him anything now all of a sudden he's Father Abraham now yeah. he see that goes to show once you get in hell you will know the truth and mm-hmm. Abraham told him he said no listen he said if he said, the dead cannot come back. It's over. And he said, mm-hmm. if they didn't listen to Moses and the prophets, shame on them. Right. Yeah. So that goes to show that the God of the God of Israel is the one true God, and the Torah, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the whole Bible, all, all mm-hmm. books of the Bible are real, and they are God's word. Mm-hmm. So if you don't listen, to, what do you say? If you don't pay attention to the word of God, then mm-hmm. shame on you. Yeah, yeah. Then exactly if they right. don't, those who come come by the unction of the Holy Spirit, and if they ain't listening to the Holy Spirit through the anointing of the man who's anointed to speak, if they're not listening to God that way, they're definitely not going to listen to somebody who's not anointed, who is not carrying the Holy Spirit to speak that word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this also, you know what, this also um, uh, uh, reproves, whatever, this this also corrects the mm-hmm. necromancy people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Think about right. it. The people that people talk to Aunt Susie and Uncle Bill, and I, Aunt Susie and Uncle Bill have <laughs> been gone for 10 years. <laughs> and they talk, well, I talked to Aunt Susie, and they, she told me the combination to the lock at the bank so I can get some money. No, she didn't. <laughs> uh-huh. You talked to Aunt Susie, but it wasn't the Aunt Susie that you used to know. <laughs> Right. It did not come back. They're gone. God goes, and, and what did she say? What did Nikki say? There's a great gulf fix. You can't it's a come great back. Chasm. Mm-hmm. 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 Shame on can't you. Come over there. Mm-hmm. Amen. Can't come Amen. back. I can't go to you. You can't come to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Who said that? Wouldn't it come from? Wasn't a movie or something? I can go to him. Oh, David, King David. King mm-hmm. David said that I can go to him. But my son cannot come to me. Mm. Wow. Oh, oh, oh. This, this is this is a real good lesson in humility, and this is a real good lesson in. Uh, you know, I was talking to my wife. I think it's about I don't know about a year ago. I still remember the conversation, and I was telling her how God can act like a mom and He can act like a dad. You know, both of those characteristics are wrapped up in in, in God because now. He made God is acting like a mom. Yeah. He's acting like a mom by giving us chance after chance after chance after chance. You know, not, not every mama like that because my mama used to beat our brains in. But, um, <laughs> you know, she, more generally speaking, <laughs> women are more lenient. You know, don't do that again. Don't do that again. Dads are usually the law. You know, uh, you only get a certain amount of chances and dads going to go off. So here God is giving us all his grace, all his grace to get it right ourselves and all his teaching, all his uh, guidance. But then it's going to come a time where that's going to close. That's mm-hmm. going to stop and he's going to become dead. And the belt going to come out. 
and you know, it ain't you know, we all got uh heard of these whoopings where the kid is saying, I'm not gonna do it no more while he's getting the whooping. That's the same thing this dude is saying, I'm tortured in this flame. <laughs> Because I remember when I got a whooping, I was like, Ma, okay, I would not, I would never do this again. Mm. And then, she, you know, she was like, well, I know you're not going to do it again. So it's kind of like that duality thing that once God turns to dad, he's dead. Ain't no more chances. It's done. Here comes the whooping. You had enough chances. And that's the, it, it, that's what uh, I get out of this. And the other thing I was looking at, and I'm going to be quiet, is, how many, and I know we talked about this uh, before, and I'm going I'm to keep it short. How many times this dude said, I, for I am tormented in this flame. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I pray the Father. You know, uh, I have five brothers. You know, it's, it's all about him. And I, I, I'm amazed. I, I. Yeah. So, it, you know, you lived your whole life it, it being about you, but you can't live your afterlife and it be about you. <laughs> what is the definition of a fool? Oh, Jesus, he went to hell and he's still talking about I. <laughs> I, I some people, you just got to laugh. That I, this, I, that, and I don't get this and I don't get that, and everything's woe is me. And you know, it just boils down to either happiness or torment. There's no in between. Right. Right. No, no in between happiness or torment. And I was thinking, when you were saying about, you know, compassion. You know, the evil one, I want everybody, I want you to be very, very careful making your decisions, be frugal with your decisions, if that's the word, um, because the enemy uses our compassion, he, how you say, he uses our kindness mm-hmm. for a weakness. Look at, yeah. look at David, King David as well, I, I bring him up a lot. Um, King David was, uh, Absalom, his own son, tried to kill him, and, and, they, they, and his one son raped his daughter, and, and the one that raped his daughter was talking about how, oh, well, you know, our father, he's he's uh, he has a lot of compassion. He loves. He's in love with love or something. He loves to love people. He don't. Mind. He'll let me go. See, and this is what happens. People will use us, and they will abuse us because oh. they know that we have. What am I trying to say, y'all? Help me out. You know what I'm yes. Yeah. 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 And we could become Thank enablers. Yeah. Yes. Kindness for weakness. Mm-hmm. Say that again. Say that again. They take your kindness for weakness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so um, be very, very careful. Yes, because uh, sometimes love is a swift kick in the butt. Yeah. It's still love. It's still love. Wow, praise the Lord. Amen. Do anybody have anything else they want to say or add to the Bible study? we got about five to six more minutes. Yeah, you know, that um, reminds me of that book I read, um, the one you let me read. It's... People don't know the difference between being a peacemaker and a peacekeeper because some people keep the peace at any cost and they let all the wrong things go on because they don't want to disturb the peace. But a person mm. who makes the peace is going to step in and put their foot down. They're going to have the tough love or the soft, you know, <laughs> grace or whatever they need at that point in time because, by mm-hmm. God, we ask for me and my house, we're going to serve yeah, the Lord. Serve the Lord. Uh, or Actually, y'all don't know what y'all doing peace, now. <laughs> you got the peacemaker is, well, don't upset the demons because then there'll be trouble. No, and then you got the peacemaker. You got to go. Mm-hmm. Okay, That's good. So I would be a peacemaker because, um, yes. re- did, did you see what I wrote on um, Facebook? <laughs> on Facebook this morning, it was so good. I had to step back and look at it myself. What was mm. it I wrote? I wrote, um, uh, uh, war- uh, no, what was it? Uh, I can't think of something about a warrior. Warfare. I said, it, 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 yeah, warfare is just what I do. <laughs> and it is. I'm just that type of person. <laughs> I've got I've got the simplify going on here. You know what I mean? And and I've been I had a, <laughs> I had a hard life, and God saw me through it. God's been with me. And and where I'm I'm like the chi- the, the bull in the china shop. Mm-hmm. I have that type of I'm the type of person where I have to have somebody. You know, the Bible says that God sent them two by two. Jesus sent them two by two. And and the I have to I have to have the one to make the two, I can't do it by myself because, like, I, I, I don't know if anybody knows this, but um, Nicole and Alexi are like my, they speak for me, they speak softly because they're good with words and everything. <laughs> no, there's just sometimes, you just know what I'm talking 
move out. I come to you because they say things better than I do. I just, I, I have that Marine Corps attitude where I just, let's go in and just get, knock them out. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and you can't, you can't use that attitude all the time. And people see it as evil. They think you're a mean person. Let's stay away from her. She's a troublemaker. No, I'm mm-hmm. not a troublemaker. I just don't like no mess. You know, it's yeah. warfare. It's what I do. I was taught by the Texas Rangers, and they're no joke. And that's I'm yeah. the same way spiritually. I don't like, you know, putting powder on somebody when they actually need some deodorant. I mean, I, you know, I, I like to, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> I don't like the problem that the situation. And honestly, Nicole and Alexa Yins are on now. Am I telling the truth about using Yins for softer and kinder words? Uh-huh. Mm, you go ahead, Nicole. You write the letter because, see, if I write it, it everything's going to go wrong. Please help me. Yep. Honestly, right. tell the truth. And Nicole and Alexi has written so many letters that I've written to people, and they don't even realize it was, it was them because I wouldn't say the word. I, my wording is off. My wording is wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, God's, God sends helpers, and I like that. God sends helpers. And until the day Remember we die. Remember that right. You got to shut the door, get up, get out, and be quiet. We got to go, why don't you get to the point? So, <laughs> like you to be a little more quiet, you know. Why is they point me? <laughs> oh, Grace, but God is good. God is good. So, yeah. we, we just can't, we, we got to keep our eyes open. Either you, uh, you uh, happiness or torment, that's, that's what we have to look forward to. And I look forward to happiness. I need it. Yeah. I need it bad. I love the Lord. Yes. Amen. All right, mm-hmm. praise God. All right, that's okay. another beautiful Bible study as usual. Um, it feels good. God is good. We learned another lesson. We learned that them people to be speaking to dead folks is wrong, no matter how much mm-hmm. they try to argue with us. Yeah. <laughs> You know, so um, I'm going to go ahead and pray out. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everybody that was here tonight. We have an awesome time. It's, we just have a wonderful time in you, a wonderful time in Jesus. And, Jesus, we thank you for allowing us to be able to do these Bible studies like this. We thank you for allowing us to be able to open our mouths and speak and even correct them as we talk it out, as we talk through it. It's just an awesome wonder. And, God, we ask that you continue to use us and teach us even after we get off of this phone line tonight. Bless every household that is here. The way you've been blessing me lately, Lord, you've truly been blessing me, unusually so. And I don't know what I did to deserve that, but I thank you for it. And I ask you now to put it on everybody that's on this Bible study and everybody that's going to come back on later and listen. Please, God, in Jesus' name, bless them ten times more than you've been blessing me. It is totally awesome, and I'm enjoying it. In Jesus' name, I thank you for this Bible study. Amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. God bless you guys, and I'll see you hopefully back next Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Good night. Good night.